Welcome back to another Boone Hogarth uh, experiment module. It seems like the experiment is going well. I'm slowly keeping it alive. Uh, and it, you know, it charges me to, uh, to uh, expand on my art. And, you know, thank you for your comments and thank you for uh, the support because it keeps me going. Just, just one drop of a comment or, or a support, you know, it just fuels me to do these. And, um, so, uh, what I'm going to, what I'm going to be going over today is the, the wedge box of the pelvis and the barrel of the chest. And he just touches on this in the first chapter, but then he goes into a more depth in, in chapter two. So I'm just going to go over this and how it was a kind of a revelation to me when I first started drawing in my twenties, how this really changed the way I, I thought about, uh, drawing from my, uh, from my left side and creating my own figures through my imagination, through this method. I wanted to touch on, um, this book, um, that I just recently discovered, um, that was printed in 1976. And there's like a really interesting interview with Bern Hogarth on the printing of this. And it's just, it's just filled with just amazing ink drawings that, uh, is really, uh, really fun to look at. And, and maybe we can expound on that and, you know, draw from this too using his method. So that's, that's just for your future video. And so he talks about the barrel of the chest in these, in these two pages. And, um, we'll go ahead and just do some, some drawings, some simple drawings, and then maybe do a finished drawing with his methods of, with the chalk and the, and the, uh, and the muscles. So, um, so he's talking about here, the lower torso has like a general shape of a wedge. We learned this too in, in George Bridgman. Uh, uh, you know, he, he, you know, he showed it, you know, in like the, the three masses or the head, the, the torso and, and the pelvis, you know, and, um, and here Bernhardt talks, talks about it. You know, he's saying that, um, after the, you were, the, the rib cage and the pelvic wedge are the second largest masses and they're locked in with the tapering muscles, you know, and, um, <clears throat> and then the way it's, um, you know, when it's, when a person stands erect and straight up, um, you know, th this is arcing this way and this is arcing that way in relationship. Um, and then, you know, the, the lower, the lower pelvic wedge is tipped forward in this, in this drawing and the rear buttock area arches up into view. So we're, we're going to finish this with this drawing here, but we're just going to work on, um, we're just going to work on, on some of these just to get the feel of, um, of that the, the barrel of the, the barrel of the chest and the pelvic wedge with the connecting muscles that make it move. And this was like a revelation to me when I started drawing um, in my twenties because I always drew from my mind. And then when I saw this, it really like unstiffened on my work and gave, it gave it more like a fluid, a fluid feel. So he's talking about um, the, um, the upper wedge and the bottom wedge, and we're going to be doing a standing figure and a sitting figure. And so, you know, he doesn't, you know, we have always, you know, when we, when we draw stuff with like the Michael Hampton method, you know, it's, it's pretty much, you know, pretty much like, like that, you know, we're just doing like a, um, like, like we draw, a, a, like we draw a gesture drawing, but this one's got like more, it's got more to it. It's not just like a straight, so 
I'm just going to use a regular pencil. So here it's more like we'll draw. I can see that. So that's, that's kind of what he has as far as our construction of it. And then he's got the the wedge going this way, coming out. And then he's got, got it going in like this and like that. So it's like the wedges and then he's got the connecting muscles here. Uh, you know, he's got the head. It's more, more constructed and more refined as far as the wedges. And then, you know, we'll put some little shade in there. And then, um, you know, just, just practice that, you know, it's not, you know, you could just do this and then this is coming out just two like lumps, you know, and you could, you know, when you're doing gesture drawings, you can do that. Um, but here he's got a way more refined and precise. <clears throat> then he's got this broken up. Uh, so really you just got to get used to drawing that barrel shape. You know, you can, you can just start with a mass, just two masses like that. And then you can refine it, you know, cause he's got, got this going in this direction. You chisel it down, shave it off, uh, and then this, this circles around. This is like it um it winds around, and then this picks up like that, and then this wedge it sticks out the other direction, and then these go in like that. Like this, like this here. Um, and then this connects. So I'm finding a different colored chalk. So this is going in this direction. And that's going up in this direction. And this is going in this direction. Same way here. So you can start off with <clears throat> just a lump and then and then refine it. <clears throat> um, so let's do the sitting figure. So the sitting figure is um, We'll go ahead and just do two big lumps. We'll start off with just, just two big lumps, you know, no, no refinement. And then we'll start, um, you know, like, um, like Michael Hampton says, you know, we'll, we'll chisel it, we'll not chisel it, we'll slice it. We'll slice it. We'll slice it. So let's go ahead and slice it. Um, 
Slicing this wedge. And we're bringing this out. We're extending that. Then we have this wedge, the sitting figure. This wedge just comes out here. And this is more like a standard wedge here. There's really not a lot of like variation like here. Let me just draw a little bit of the leg he's got. And then, um, you know, he has, you know where where these where these come out he's got these going in you know this direction and then this comes around that and then he's got this like a center line in here and then this is coming down here um <clears throat> But I noticed that where, where this where this breaks down, this area right here, where this wedge breaks, is pretty much where the chest ends. I noticed in his drawings. And then, then you have your um, stomach muscles. And then it's kind of like um, pinched right there. Then you have two large ones right here. And then um, this connects here. And then you can do a little shoulder. And then you can do your muscles here. Um, <clears throat> so that's the sitting figure. So let's... Um, so you have room for a couple more drawings. Um, and, you know, just experiment with that. You know, open the book up, experiment with these, and see how many variations you can you can get on your own, you know, and just have fun with it. You know, uh, it's, um, it's a great way just to sit back, you know, whether you're on a, a tablet or on, on a, you know, sketchbook. But one thing he, he says is, you know, never start with the head. Always start with the barrel of the chest and the, and the pelvis. But I find that, um, you know, I'm always, you know, Michael Hampton talked about starting with the head first. Because when you start with the head first, then you can, you can, um, you can uh, determine where it is that you are and then once you have your figure established then you can erase the head and um and then change it i know um that's what i do i start with the head but burn talks about don't start with the head start with your torso then your pelvis then and then connect them um so it's saying the torso mass is central double form to which all other forms attach so your torso is your main source of gravity so let's go ahead and, and just do uh, some quick some quick um quick studies of what i just explained using burns drawings as a starting point all right so we'll start with this one um so our 
we'll go ahead and just start with two lumps. And then we'll go ahead and slice through it. So we have this. And then this is where the chest ends. Try, try just try to remember that's where the chest ends. And then it's like a barrel. And then we have this. Now this is more like a, just a regular wedge or, or rather, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, more like a regular box. So, um, and then we have our, our line. We have the center line. This is the, this is the center line of our body right there. <clears throat> and that's the most important part to connect the two masses. The intersection, a crucial interest here is the intersection of the middle midline of both figures. Um, the midline or center line gives unity and direction to the independent movements of the separate masses. And then we can, we can uh, connect them. And like I said, we're, Let's see, where this, or this mass, or this barrel ends, just remember, this is the end of the chest, right there. And like a sitting figure here. <clears throat> And this was like, wow, I can I can start doing this stuff on my own without having to to make it look very stiff, you know, and I didn't have to, you know, um, labor over the drawing to try to make it look natural. So there's our chest. And he's always got like these two huge <clears throat> stomach muscles and he's got two small ones and he's got two huge ones right there like that. And then... Make sure he's running, reaching up. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Maybe a little shading. But this just just shows you um, the way it works. Um, let's do another one, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, uh, let's try this. So, so we do a barrel shape. We'll just do our mass, big mass, and this is going this way. And, um, this will be our center line. And then uh, just remember where where the chest meets, the end of the chest, that's where it intercedes, it goes in. So we'll do that like just to give you an example. So that's where it goes in. And then we slice out this side. Um, and then we draw we can draw our wedge and it's going in this direction. Like so, and then here's our center line. And then we can um, lighten this up, just kind of shade, just lighten that shade up just a little, just so we can not be so dark. And then we can connect the lines, you know, so we got our chest, our handlebars of the clavicle, and then <clears throat> here we got these two huge Boone Hogarth um, stomach muscles, and we got two small ones, and then we got two huge ones right there. And then we connect them, stretching the pinch. And I get 
eraser. So I'm gonna kind of gonna erase a little bit here, just to give you an idea. I'll get lost. This mess. So it gives you an idea of how to like stretch and and twist. You know, and he's got like you know his um his arms um and it comes out there and then you can draw your head so we'll go ahead and outline <clears throat> Outline um, our uh, our barrel, our chest barrel. So our chest barrel is like right there, and it always tapers in right at the bottom of the chest, and then this goes in. And then we have our simple wedge here. Let's do um, let's do one more, and then we'll we'll, uh, we'll do a nice finished drawing to uh, be their climax. Okay, so <clears throat> here we'll go ahead and just do our lumps. We have our two lumps here. Then we find out where the bottom of the chest is, so it'd be right, right around here, and then it tapers in. And we'll draw our side, we'll slice that. So here we go with that view. And then here's our center line. And then we'll draw our other wedge under here. So that's our, our wedge. Right. And then um, we'll kind of slice that up. So remember, our, the bottom of our chest always starts right there. So I'm just going to kind of... So we take our needed eraser and um, there's two small stomach muscles and you got two two huge ones. So yeah, basically um, Bern Hogarth um, stomach muscles are like that. You have your, your medium muscle, the tiny muscles, and these two huge muscles. Um, and then um, we'll go ahead and do the bottom of our chest here. And then these guys here. These guys here. And then um, we have our wedge here. <clears throat> so in our center line would be our center line would be like that. And then you can go in and touch your arms and your legs. Um and you know, find out where your head is. So here the head's like receding in, almost like a Jack Kirby. You know, Jack Kirby always does like the head, like all oh, like Jack Kirby does, you know, there's the head and there's like the torso. It's always like lunging at you. Um, uh, and then you can do you know, your, your, uh, your arm. This guy's coming out here, kind of throwing a punch, a little foreshortening. Uh, and this guy's coming out here, this leg. Uh, 
this guy's coming out here. Um, now, see, the head is kind of, it looks stiff, so let me do that. So it was more like tilted, tilted this way. Yeah, that's better. And then uh, yeah, you can go in and shade and fix it up, look real nice. Right now I'm just gonna keep it abstract. Yeah, and then um, yeah, I feel like use your needed eraser and just punch stuff out. Yeah, so it kind of gives you an idea of um, of how to do this, you know, on your own. Once you get it, you know, you can just kind of make stuff up, you know. Yeah, some balance here. You know, you can just do stuff on your own. Um, okay, so let's go our, to our crescendo, our climax, and um, put, make a nice uh, Bone Hogarth drawing. All right. So we'll start with just a, just a regular pencil here, soft pencil. And kind of see, let's kind of size it up. Some sizing you got right now, so, all right. So this is going to be a barrel of the chest. And this is going to be the witch of our Woody Maximus Pelvis. So this, this is like, it's almost like a, um, it's almost like it, it, um, it cross sections in, I'm just kind of like, And then, you know, it's got the directions going this way of the construction. And that's going this way. And that, this goes in. Um, and then um, we'll go ahead and slice that. Slice that. And then um, taper this off here. And that's basically it. And then we have our center line that connects them. And then you can draw your neck. You know, not on your arms. So we have that. Um, this leg's kind of coming back. All right, so let's get our charcoal. Let's get our charcoal here. This is kind of gray. Black charcoal. It's kind of a flat, flat deal. Uh, so I'm going to start, I'm going to start with this section here. Maximus. Remember, we talked about the butterfly in a previous chapter. This is our butterfly. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm building up from 
I'm, I'm going to be building up from dark to light. So I'm so I'm pretty happy with what that came out right there. So I'm gonna do a little darker here. Is I'm just gonna go over this with just a light, very lightly, to give it one equal, just one equal tone. I'm just gonna use my finger and start blending. And determining what I need to lighten up and what I need to darken. Okay, so now <clears throat> the center line is kind of off here, should be right, right around there. And it's really not that difficult once you understand the, the, um, the rudiments of it, you can really just go to town. Got go ahead and chisel that out right there. Okay, so now we take our kneaded eraser and start punching stuff out and bringing in subtleties to the to the muscles. And this is kind of like really light here. Okay, and then um, here, is like where it tapers off and it kind of turns into a barrel. So that so so here it gets darker and then here it gets lighter. So I'm just gonna push this stuff out. <clears throat> yeah, it's um, it's really fun doing these. Uh, okay, so then this gets darker here. It's all just dark. And um, and here, like, just like it tapers in, tapers in. Can make that up, get a little messy here. Bro. 
to find that. Okay. And you have this connection here. Uh, it looks a little dark. The This needs to come out more. And then this needs to be more pronounced up here. Uh, then we have um, buttocks here. This is super light. Not exact. Um, it, this looks like it comes in this way. It comes in just a little more. And let's clean this up. Just making a mess. Here we got some um, some reflective light going on right there. I'm not sure if I can get that out. Yeah, got it out. Yeah, my wedge is just a little off right there. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, the buttocks need to come down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Right there. But I mean, you know, it's... You know, our version. Um, and then... Um, <clears throat> Go in and, and just draw a shoulder. That would be. And then this guy right over here. You know, and, um, you know, Byrne looked at a lot of, of Michelangelo. <clears throat> Michelangelo is a, is a um, huge influence. And I'll just do some subtleties here. All right, so we're gonna clean this up and we'll call it a night. Um, another mod. All right. Oof. Sometimes you get um, chalk, you get chalk like uh, stuck in your racer and so it gets, that's what happens. Uh, clean this up. I guess messy, but you know, these are just, these are just studies, you know. But you want to look nice for your your, your thumbnail. All right, all right. Yeah, you see that? See what I just did? There's like sometimes you can get if you're not careful, you get chalk like stuck in your knee eraser. It's the worst thing happen. Um. Yeah, I'm just. This needs to come in some. Let's try this, see if this works. So I hope it was, it was some help and hope you enjoyed that. And for you future artists out there who are just starting out, you know, it's a great way to learn how to, to work from, you know, the, the two masses, the, the barrel chest and the, and the, uh, the pelvic wedge. Um, you know, uh, George Virgin goes over that a lot. And um, so does uh, Michael Hampton. But this is just, you know, the way Bern Hogarth would do it. And, um, you know, we can uh get more into it more you know like i said i wanted to um, work on his other art book that I, I discovered and there's so much you know we can we can go over and and i'm just glad that um, people are interested and, and people are uh <clears throat> are willing to learn you know because he has an acquired taste and not everybody agrees that you know he he is a uh, he is someone to um to study so, um, so thanks again. And, you know, if you like what you see, consider subscribing because it helps a small YouTuber like me grow and, um, gain momentum in, in, uh, in a huge field, you know? So, um, thanks again for watching and God bless.